This video will discuss hypothesis testing and what is meant by p-value and statistical significance. An assumption is an untested premise or claim. So for example, if a person were to say, people of the opposite sex find me attractive, that's an assertion that may or may not have been tested. But a hypothesis is when we take that untested premise or claim and we put it into a form that it can be tested. Now to make this more formal, we develop what's called a null and alternate hypothesis. The null hypothesis is usually there is no difference. It's called H0, that's a zero, not an O. One way to remember that is that if that's a zero, there's nothing there, there is no difference. The alternative hypothesis is opposite of the null hypothesis, and it's usually there is a difference, or it's the research claim that we want to be able to find support for. Let's take an example. There's no difference in productivity between machines A and B. The alternate could be they are different, they have different productivities. Or we could even be more specific and we could say machine A is more productive than machine B or machine B is more productive than machine A. They both can't be logically correct. Another example is the earth is round versus the earth is flat. It used to be when the most people believed the earth was flat, that was the non-interesting hypothesis. And then people had to collect evidence that the earth was round. Now, most people believe the earth is round. And so we could make that the null hypothesis. And the more interesting one, whether it's true or not, is that the earth is flat. Let's look at a cards example. Let's say that I told you that I had gone into another room and shuffled a deck of cards. Half are red and half are black. You didn't see me do it, so you have to evaluate my claim based on the evidence that you can gather. So what do you expect? If the cards were randomly distributed, you would expect something that looks like this. The red and black cards are somewhat interleaved, but a random shuffle deck does not have to look like this. Even if it's randomly shuffled, it's possible that there's a series of cards that are the same color. That is, there could be a series of consecutive black cards or a series of consecutive red cards. Now, our hypothesis would look something like this. The null hypothesis would be that the deck was shuffled randomly, and the alternate hypothesis would be it was not shuffled randomly. And we want to accumulate evidence to see if we can reject the null hypothesis and support the alternate hypothesis with some confidence. And the phrase with some confidence is important because we want to be able to use statistics to be able to give us some support that what we found is unlikely or is likely. Now to do this, we need to calculate probabilities. Let's calculate the probabilities of consecutive cards being the same color. There are two red suites and two black suites, so the probability of drawing a red card is 0.5 and the probability of drawing a black card is 0.5. If each card drawn has a probability of 0.5, then there's a 0.5 probability of being black or red, and we can calculate the consecutive probabilities by multiplying the previous sequence by 0.5. So it goes like this drawing one card of a specific suite, let's just say black, the first card has a 0.5 probability of being black. The second card has 2.5 probabilities. So the first one is 0.5 and the second one is 0.5 and if you multiply those together you get a 0.25 or one quarter probability that the cards are consecutive colors. If you draw another card then you multiply that by 0.5 and now the probability drops by half. So each time we draw a card the probability that the consecutive cards are staying the same colors drops by 0.5. As you go down the table you can see that we get lower and lower probabilities that that should happen by chance. So this is really a table that helps you know what would happen if you were supposed to draw cards randomly by chance, if they really were random. So let's draw cards. Now the first card we draw is black, and so is the second, and so is the third. So far that doesn't seem to be really unusual. We might be expecting some reds and blacks interleaved, but it's not that concerning yet. But if we draw the fourth card, and that's also a consecutive black, then most people will start thinking the evidence is starting to pile up, that this is not a randomly distributed deck of cards. Now if we draw a fifth card, now the probability is that we drew five cards of the same color are 0.03. Now the evidence starts to, for most people starts to be pretty strong that we have a non-random shuffle deck. And if we continue doing this, each card that we draw that is continually of the same suite, the probabilities get smaller and smaller. Now let's assume that the null hypothesis was true. The deck was shuffled randomly and we had been drawing black cards just because of random chance. If the null hypothesis is true, the p-value is the calculated probability of observing evidence that supports 
the alternate hypothesis due to chance. This is exactly what was happening in our little scenario. We kept drawing black cards just due to chance. And as we did that, the p-value got smaller and smaller. The probability of getting these due to chance as we kept drawing successive cards just kept going down and down and down. The smaller the p-value, the stronger the evidence to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis. As we kept finding consecutive black cards, the support for the alternate hypothesis got stronger, so we became more confident that we could reject the null hypothesis, even though the null hypothesis was true. Now, how does this relate to statistical significance? Statistical significance means there's a low probability of finding a false positive due to chance. This is what we did. Due to just random chance, we kept drawing black cards, even though the deck was shuffled. And despite the probability is low, we saw misleading evidence by chance that led us to conclude that we could reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we got a false positive. We got a false positive that we could support the alternate hypothesis.